You've heard of a game remaster, but have you ever heard of a processor remaster? Well, I think this is a first, really. Good afternoon, welcome back to T3. On today's show, I have some really cool nostalgia pieces in front of me actually, because this takes me back some, I don't know, 15 ish years, these processes. And my initial outset with gaming, which started on AMD Athlon 2400 Plus, which was a absolute kettle, uh, had a very small contact patch for your cooler and as a result struggled quite immensely and then they put on this sort of head on the Socket 939 edition AMD Athlon 64s and I had a 3000 plus which at the time was very very good bang for buck really it was a very cheap way to get gaming and AMD just has after nearly 15 years or 13 14 years of semantics hit a repeat though this is the bullet point of this presentation with the Ryzen 3100 and 3300X, which are the two uh, culprits I have in front of me. And I've been playing with these for a couple of days now. And well, the report is, it's really good, pretty much. <laughs> what Ryzen has done is sort of brilliant. So to give you an idea about how processes are made and, and, and what they've actually done here is all processes are actually cut from the same cloth. So when they print that die or create the die, it takes a couple of months, about eight to 10 months or so for it to all be UV baked and have all of the things that are needed done to it to make the processor. But all of the processes are cut from the same cloth. So a, a Ryzen 3 and a Ryzen 9 actually come basically from the same piece of die. And the quality of this little 3300X especially compared to a high-end dial like a Ryzen 9 3950X is absolutely phenomenal. Now looking at the, a couple of benchmark scores and some of my testing, you'll notice that the single core performance of the 3300X is almost an absolute dead heat with the 3950X. Of course, a 16 core is going to absolutely smash a four core when it comes to multi-threaded testing, but for gaming, you don't really need much more than a quad core. And what they've created here, and a $120 chip is basically a 7700K that you can then still overclock and get even better performance out of. If you have a look at the CSGO and Firestrike benchmarks, they did actually improve and quite a bit, which is something that I'm really not used to at all. The 2700X, when I tested that and used that, it almost always got worse when I tried to do the overclocking myself. The XFR being able to give better single core boost on, on sort of demand, then I was able to actually hard clock into the chip. But that wasn't the case with the 3300X. And even when I put the simultaneous multi-threading on to do some, some uh, sort of hyper-threading tests there, and with even without overclock, it's better, well, it's basically the same as my 9600K of test bench, which with a 4.8 gigahertz all core and six cores, got 1,100 points. This little quad core with hyper threading gets that on stock and, and goes a little bit past that when I do have a clock. But I, the most incredible thing for me is the fact that the clock actually resulted in gaming performance. And that's just absolutely staggering for a chip that runs on 65 watts. I did have it, look, underneath my Xeon 280R, so it was cooled <laughs> more than what you would get out of the box. But based on those test results i mean I, I only managed to hit 68 degrees while i was trying to overclock it as hard as i could and that was a 4.6 all core on the 3300x so the 3100 look also did a really good job there's just a physical difference inside of the cores which does make the 3300x quite a lot more responsive especially with single core uh, tasks it's got less channeling happening inside of the processor. So there's one communication 
lane in and instead of it being split between two and trying to flop back and forth this is just straight up down the line performance and they've done this all incredibly as i said 120 dollars and quite fortuitously a couple of days ago old tweak town did produce their 10 600k and 10 and 100k benchmarks and in gaming this is almost as good as the 10 600k and this wasn't overclocked what i also want to note is the setup that AMD has created and the precedence they've created actually with this 30th gen NX and with my 3950X testing, you can practically buy on AMD any of the cores based on your budget if you want a 4 core, 6 core, 8 core, 10, 12, uh, 16, etc. And the single core performance that you get for gaming will be pretty similar across the board. So you're only really scaling your cores based on your budget and requirements of desktop performance. So if you're not going to be doing rendering or anything of their like, even then, it could still do so. It's With the hyper-threading, it's still pretty powerful. It's good as a 6-core you know, Intel 9600KF, at least in multi-threaded work tasks, just based on my results around the 3950X and my experiences with the 2700X, this thing is incredible. So if you want a gaming processor with a little bit of flexibility and you really don't want to break your budget on, on extras and maybe a little bit of cooling on top of this guy, like ye olde Cooler Master Hyper 212 on a 3300X just seems like a recipe for success especially if you're looking at i would say up to 1660 ti this is going to create absolutely no bottleneck on that even 2060 2070 territory as you can see with my 2070 test it's still going to cut the mustard and pretty damn well so thank you all so much for watching we do hope you've enjoyed this review i'd love to hear your thoughts on the little risins in the comments down below and i have no doubt that a 3300X build will be showing up on eTech in the next few weeks, hopefully. But until then, you guys have a good day, and I'll see you on the flip side. Keep your lives ticking and your games wrecking.